to minister this morning. Praise God, amen. It feels good, always feels good to be in the house of God, amen. Very privileged and honored, amen. Pastor Sharapha will allow me to come behind this pulpit and preach the gospel here this morning. I'd like to thank Pastor Sharapha, Sister Janelle, amen, for everything they do for our church, our, our branch, our churches, amen. So thank you, amen. Praise God. But uh, we'll go ahead and get started. If you want to turn to your Bibles, uh, to the book of Genesis chapter 26, verses 12 through 19. If you hear me coughing a little bit, forgive me, I'm a little bit under the weather. <coughs> Seems like this cough should be kind of lingering. And so sometimes it comes, and I said, don't freak out, amen, don't freak out. Promise, amen, it's not COVID, amen, I've been tested for that, and pneumonia, and it's not any of those, amen, but it seems like it's just lingering around. <coughs> and so, amen, praise God. Uh, I want to read you a, a quote here, amen, this morning. It says, uh, a dying will. It says, despite the quest for will, willness, risk assessment, analysis and good works nobody has created a way to make life last forever you and i will die so we might as well get on with the only really pressing business there is and that is figuring out how to die well amen how many know amen we're, we're not going to live forever we're either going to die or be raptured i'm hoping i can be raptured amen not trying to scare you this morning but the truth of the matter is that we're all going, amen, to die, amen, or rapture one day, amen. And so, you know, I don't know if it's just me or if I'm just a little weird, but sometimes, you know, I think, I wonder how I'm going to go out. I wonder, I don't know, I, I wonder how I'm going to go out. And I, and I kind of, you know, daydream a little bit about it, man. I hope I go out with a heart full of faith in God. I hope I go out fighting for righteousness along with my brothers and sisters. Again, I'm not trying to scare you or anything like that this morning. But there has to be something inside of us that prompts us to want to do something worth living for. And can I tell you, Jesus Christ is worth living for. I always worry about the ones whom you can't prompt to do anything for Jesus. I remember doing, amen, I have come from the Lubbock Church when Pastor Anthony and Sister Erica pioneered it. And I always enjoyed the revivals with Pastor Serafico, Pastor Aaron, Pastor Adam, Pastor Sean. No matter what revival it was they brought in, I, by Wednesday I was like, oh man, it, I, I, it's going to end. I, I just wish it could just keep going. I was energized. I was full of the Holy Spirit. Revivals, they're supposed to make you feel energized. Amen. But every now and then over the years, I, I would hear a few disciples or people that would say I'm glad it's over I'm tired oh I'm just so glad it's over I would call them walking zombies because you couldn't prompt them to do anything I want to tell you this morning don't become a walking zombie how does someone become a walking zombie they allow dirt from the outside world they allow the earth things from the outside to come into their wells to clog it up. You and I are in danger when you allow dirt to come into your well. You lose your willpower to live. You lose your desire to do something for Jesus when once you used to be on fire. <coughs> you say things like, well, I'm here, ain't I, preacher? Well, you're really not here. You're in zombie land. And so I want to preach a sermon this morning that I entitled Redigging the Wells. The text, <coughs> excuse me, the text, amen, that we're going to be looking at is about a man who decided he was going to redig the wells in his life. I want to tell you this morning, you could have the best Pastor Serafical Saavedra. You could hear the best three sermons from the best preacher that I know, which is Pastor Serafical. Can you say Amen. You could hear the best preaching from Pastor Serafical, but redigging your wells has to be personal. The Isaac, it is personal. He decides, I'm going to redig the wells in my life. This is something that is personal. It has to be personal with you to redig the wells in your life. Pastor Serafical cannot redig the wells in your marriage. 
He cannot redig the wells in your finances. He cannot redig the wells in your relationships. And neither can he redig the wells with your relationship with God. It's just something that has to be personal between you and God. And so we're going to be looking at this in Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. You can say amen. <coughs> when Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted. For the Lord blessed him. He became a very rich man and his wealth continued to grow. He acquired so many flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle, and servants of the Philistines became jealous of him. So the Philistines filled up all of Isaac's wells with dirt. These were the wells that had been dug by the servant of his father Abraham. Finally, Abimelech ordered Isaac to leave the country. Go somewhere else, he said, for you have become too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away to Girgal Valley, where he set up their tents and settled down. He reopened the wells of his father had dug, which the Philistines had filled in after Abraham's death. Isaac also restored the names Abraham had given them. Verse 19, Isaac's servant also dug in the Girgal Valley and discovered a well of fresh water. Let's pray. Our Father, throughout in heaven, glory to Jesus Christ, my God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you begin to speak to every soul and vessel here, my God. Give them a personal revelation, God, that it's personal to redig the wells. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. <laughs> and so here we see, Amen, in our text, uh, uh, the, 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 the beginning of the chapter, the backstory here is that Isaac, Amen, started out life good. How I many know it's not how you start, it's how you finish? But here Isaac is starting out his life good in the beginning of this chapter. He has his wife, amen, his children, his family. Blessings are coming in. He has God in the center of his family. Life is good. Blessings are coming in. God is good, amen. And the Bible says that a severe drought has hit the land. This brings me to my first point I want to look at this morning, and that is surviving the attacks of the enemy. That you and I must learn to adapt, that we must learn to navigate through our land, that we must adapt to the attacks of the enemy. We cannot just stand there or sit there as stagnant and take the hits or the punches. That we have to learn to move, we have to learn uh, 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 to, to, to navigate you ever been in a fight? I'm not talking about an argument, went back and forth, but I'm talking about where you're taking full blows, where they're throwing punches at you. You ever been rocked? Then you know you've been in a fight. If you've never been rocked, then I don't know if you've ever been in a real fight. But if you've ever been in a real fight, there's something that you do, you know it's coming, and you post up, right? However it is, you fight like this, or you get ready, you get ready, and you begin to roll with the punches, right? You don't just stand there and take the punches. Because you could get knocked out. So you have to learn to navigate. You have to learn to roll with the punches. <coughs> First Peter chapter 5 verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Your enemy, the devil, wants to kill you. Make no mistake about it. He wants to steal your blessings. He wants to steal your family, your children. He wants to change the weather in your life into a drought. Perfect example is in Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 through 28. <clears throat> Jesus got into a boat and his disciples went with him. And suddenly a furnace storm hit. Key word there. And suddenly a furnace storm hit the lake. And the boat was in danger of sinking. But Jesus was asleep. <clears throat> And so something we see here is a perfect example that the enemy, the devil, wants to take you out. Here the Bible says in this story here that Jesus is with the disciples. Oh, they see Jesus not just spiritually, but physically. They have Jesus in the boat. How many know life's good when you know Jesus is in the boat with you? The weather is good. Oh, we're, we're, we're having revival. We got Pastor Jesus with us. 
They get into the boat, and the Bible said, who knows, there's a sunset. It's nice and beautiful, and the, the peace in the, there at that time. And the Bible says, and immediately, meaning the weather changed immediately. When one moment they're having a revival, the next moment the weather changed. This can happen in your life. That you could be having revival, everything's going good, and all of a sudden the weather changes in your life. There's a storm. A lot of people, when the weather changes in their life, when they begin to go through things, hard times, one of the first results that I've seen over the years of being a pastor is people say, maybe it's time to move on. Maybe it's time to leave. I want to tell you this morning, that's not the answer. In our text, Isaac is having thoughts about leaving Egypt. There's a severe fame. He, life is good. The weather has changed. There's a drought in his life. And now he's having thoughts about going back to Egypt. I mean, oh, that's never a good place to go back to Egypt. Amen. Back to your old life. And the Bible says in Genesis 26, same chapter, verse 2. Then the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not go down to Egypt, but do as I tell you. <coughs> Verse 3, live here in this land and I will be with you and bless you. Here is Isaac thinking about, you know, having second thoughts about the church and, and ministry and everything in it. And he's thinking about leaving and God says, don't leave. Stay in the covering of the church. Stay in this church. Stay where you're safe. Don't go to Egypt. I can't protect you there. You know, I preached this sermon about a week ago in my own church. And I remember saying, don't leave Hereford. Don't move to Amarillo. And I remember, you know, when I, when I prayed up and I, I write what God, I believe God tells me, wants me to speak. And, and, I, and I said that. I said, I wonder why. Well, why would, you know, we're good, man. Our church is good. You know, we're having revival. Pastor Aaron just did a revival for us, you know. And, and, uh, and, and, and in preaching this sermon, and I remember, amen, right after this sermon. I mean, that this is the last sermon a, a young woman heard in my church. Little did I know she's having thoughts about leaving, leaving the church. She's in ministry. She pays her tithe. She's faithful to three services. And behind closed doors, there's a, a, a wolf that taking her out of the church. She received a, a text, amen, that she wasn't coming back. She left her family, her sister. Her little sister comes crying to me, Pastor, me and my sister, when they were in the church, they were like this. My sister left. Pastor, what hurts me the most is she couldn't even say goodbye. And I remember preaching this sermon, saying, man, God was dealing with her. God was speaking to her. Why wasn't she listening? God was trying to save her. A lot of people run when life gets tough. because They believe in their mind it's greener on the other side when it's really not. Isaac chose to obey God. In our main text, verse 12, when Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted for the Lord blessed him. I don't know if you caught this, but he's in a drought. The land is in a drought. And he's out there. What is he doing? He's planting seeds. Imagine what all the other farmers thought. What is that? What is Isaac doing? It hasn't rained. And yet he's still planting seeds. And the Bible says because he was faithful, God honored and blessed him a hundred times fold. It tells us, church, that you may be going through a drought or whatever it is you're going through. But you must continue to plant the seeds. You must continue to outreach no matter what goes on. You must continue to push forward in your ministry. You must continue to stand fast, obey God's voice. <laughs> the Bible says there's a drought and Isaac is still yet planting seeds. He doesn't stop. This tells us that we must do our part, continue to do our part, whether that's tithing, giving, faithfulness to church attendance. We must do our part. You know, we sing that song, uh, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. I said, I 
took back what I stole. I'm not the best singer, amen, but I, got, I almost got that down. Amen. <laughs> Sing that in my church. Is that sometimes when you're going through it, you need to go to the enemy's camp and you got to take back what they stole from you. You can't just sit there. You can't just stand there. You have to do something. I remember, amen, <coughs> when the enemy attacked us in Lubbock with being with Pastor Anthony. And man, there's there assaults. And I remember some of the disciples, man, what's going on? We're taking some hits, bro. And I was like, man, we should do something. We should go to the enemy's camp, bro. We should go and, you know, and we should go take back with what the enemy's taking, bro. And so they're like, what do you think? I said, in Lubbock, there's a depot district. I don't know if anybody knows. It. It's two blocks, nothing but clubs. Uh, and, and so I decided, hey, let's go preach the gospel there, bro. And out of ten disciples, or eight, eight to ten, there was only two of us. Me and another disciple. They showed up. So that's all right. But I want to tell you, hey, man, you, could, you know, people party. They're, they're, man, they're loud, right? They're loud. They're having a good time. I mean, the whole block. But I could tell you, when I started preaching, you could hear a penny drop. I mean, you could hear the gospel. Every, it's like everybody got quiet. The gospel of Jesus Christ. His word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Isaac is spiritually and physically taking back what the enemy has stolen. In our text, <coughs> verse 15. <coughs> so the Philistines filled up all of Isaac's wells with dirt. Seems like this brother can't catch a break. First, it's a drought, and now it's an assault. Anyone ever, one thing after another, been through that? So it seems like it's one thing, and now it's another thing, it's another thing. Amen. It's always good to have the Holy Ghost with you when you're going through things. Now, many people don't know this, uh, but, 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 you know, right, you know, we, we had, you know, in our finances, somebody robbed, a, broke in my wife's car. And uh, the one time, my, the one time my wallet's in there. And they got everything. And not just to my personal account, but the church account. Wiped it clean. It's terrible, isn't it? But it's always good to have the comfort of the Holy Ghost with you. Tell my wife, babe, it's going to be all right. She's like, how could somebody do that to us? It's going to be okay. And you know, it, it, we, we got such a good testimony. And it, God gives us favor in, our, in, in Hereford. You know, people took it upon themselves to say, you know what? We want to do something for them. And they almost gave us the, the, the offering they took up for me and my wife. And our church was almost the same amount of what everything was wiped out. That's, that's, that's the God we serve. Amen. <clears throat> Tell my wife, see, why are you crying for? God got us. You and I must redig the wells in our life. That brings me to my second point, redigging the wells. We must redig the wells in our life. Verse 15, so the Philistines filled up all of Isaac's wells with dirt. This doesn't just happen overnight. I don't know if you've ever seen a well dug or the old order. It takes a lot of work. You can't just fill it with dirt in one day. How could Isaac allow this to happen in his life? How could the enemies come and just fill it up? He had more than just one well. I want to give you a few reasons how this can happen. Number one, I wrote down is neglect. He neglected his responsibilities as a husband. The Bible says that here's his wife, and he's trying to, he's like, they'll say, my wife is my sister. He's trying to give her away. Imagine what his wife felt like hearing that. Neglect. Sometimes you can neglect your wife or your children, your daughter. Or your duties as a man of God, you can begin to neglect things. You can neglect prayer, the prayer room. You can neglect reading your Bible as a Christian 20 minutes of the day. The first fruits. You can neglect church attendance. Perfect example, 1 Kings chapter 18 tells a story of verse 25 through 39 tells a story when Elijah calls on God <coughs> to come down <coughs> from heaven. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 30 says, <clears throat> And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people uh, came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Before God could come down with the Holy Ghost fire, 
The Bible says that Elijah had to repair the altar. Why? Because people begin to neglect the altar. We don't have to go to the altar no more. Or they begin to neglect it in their life. You can begin to neglect things. Let me ask you this morning. Have you neglected God in some areas of your life? Could it be the very thing that was saving your life, giving you life, you neglected? Number two that I wrote down was compromise. When you compromise with the earth or people, sinners that are in the earth, all you do is fill yourself with dirt. When you compromise with unsaved friends, all you do is fill yourself with dirt. They're throwing in dirt in your well. When you compromise with sin, you fill yourself with dirt. The perfect example, the Bible says that Lot was trying to give his daughters away to, to sinful men. Why? Why would any man try to give their own daughters away? Because he was a compromiser. He compromised in his life. When you compromise in little things, you'll compromise in big things and mark it down one thing. One day it'll come out. I may have not known what was going on in, my, in that young girl, but God just, it's like he ripped the curtains. And one day, God will show the curtains and he'll expose it to the whole church. And you'll look like a fool. Isaac came to a place in his life where he looks at his life, he begins to evaluate his life, and he realizes, I can't continue to live like this. I can't continue to be a compromiser. I can't continue to neglect God in my life. I have to make a decision to change who I am. He makes a decision to redig the wells in his life. I want to tell you this morning, it takes hard work and dedication for some. Amen. Redigging the wells in your life, it means a, a recommitment with Jesus. Maybe starting fresh, brand new. Uh, for others, it could be just starting to come to church more. Church attendance will make a big difference in your life. Hidden areas in your life. And prayer where nobody looks, nobody sees that. Reading your Bible, nobody sees that. Pastor don't see that. There's some people you need to remove the dirt in your life. You have to remove it out of your house, whatever it is or whoever it is. That brings me to my third point, amen. <clears throat> and that is God's promise. Verse 32 and 33 of our same chapter, amen. It says, verse 32, that very day Isaac's servants came and told him about a new life, a new, <clears throat> told him about a new well that they had dug. <clears throat> we found water, they exclaimed. So Isaac named the well, which means oath. And to this day, the town that grew up there means oath. And to this day, the town that grew up there is called Beersheba, which means well of oath. God was giving Isaac a new well. It was a promise. Isaac, we know he redigged the wells, and because he digged the wells, God says, I got even a better well for you. I got a well that provides a streams of living water. I want to tell you, you may be in a drought here this morning, or whatever it is you're going through, and God's, God can cause living waters to come out of a rock in the middle of a desert to, to supply living waters to you. If you do your part, God will do his part. God wants to give us, give you maybe this morning, a new well. Pastor, I got wells. God wants to give you even a better well. Amen. A well that never runs out. It just keeps flowing and flowing and flowing. If I get every head bow down, eye closed, amen, this morning. First and foremost, you, maybe you're here and you're visiting Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor Joe, the truth is I don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, but I want this personal relationship with Jesus. Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, you know, I, 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 I don't have this. I knew a religion before, but, but I want a personal relationship with Jesus. The truth is I'm backslidden in heart. My sin separates me from the Father. Maybe that's you. You want to come back. The Bible says that God, Jesus, is married to the backslider. Someone who makes mistakes, you can make it right this morning, amen. Very quickly, side to side, front to back. As I get ready to change the order of service, maybe you're here. 
Maybe you knew Jesus at one time. Maybe you used to come to church or you used to have a relationship, but you see yourself and you're honest. You say, the truth is, I, I feel like my relationship is far from Jesus. And I want to be closer. Oh, preacher, I want to be so close. I want to hear his heartbeat. Or maybe that's you. Say, you want to make a recommitment with Jesus Christ? All you have to simply do is raise your hand. Amen. Anybody very quickly, side to side. You don't have to be ashamed. Amen. I risen my hand many times. Amen. We do this to show a sign of faith and an action. Very quickly, side to side, front to back. Amen. Praise God. With that being said, amen, I'm just going to change the order of service. I'm just going to open up these altars for anybody to like to come and pray. Maybe God spoke to you about redigging the wells in your life. Maybe about a recommitment. I'd like to open up these altars for anybody to come and you pray and you talk to God as long as you need to. Oh, you did not.